This movie about a guy named Mike Fallen. He's not your regular dude, he's a hitman, but he's got this knack for making his murders look like accidents. One night, this kinda tipsy guy shows up at Mike's place. Little did the tipsy guy know, Mike was waiting for him right there, and not for a friendly chat. In the super dark room, the tipsy guy tries to turn on the lights. But then he spots this shiny watch on a shelf with a dim lamp. Thinking he can grab that watch, the guy grabs a chair. And that's when Mike, lurking in the shadows, pulls out a rope he'd prepared. Quick as a flash, he chokes the guy with it. Mike gets the job done and makes it look like the guy offed himself by hanging. So, after pulling off his little stunt, Mike decides to hit up a nightclub. He greases the palms of the bouncers to get inside and stir up some trouble. Once he's in, Mike unintentionally gets into it with a big, bald dude. Now Mike could easily handle this big fella, but then his buddies roll in, and it's a recipe for a brawl. As you can guess, a wild brawl breaks out, just like Mike wanted. And of course, Mike comes out on top, taking them all down. He calls this whole thing his way of letting off steam after doing a job, like a post-murder stress reliever. Now, once Mike's had his fill of fun, he heads over to this pub called Oasis. It's not your typical pub though, it's like a secret clubhouse for assassins, and Mike's part of the crew. Oasis isn't just a watering hole, it's also this hush-hush organization that manages jobs for assassins like Mike, who are basically the regulars. Now, aside from Mike, you've got this crew of regulars at Oasis. There's Carnage Cliff, this assassin known for being super brutal, hacking up folks with an axe. Then there's Pete, who's all about poisoning people. You've also got Mick and Mac, these military vets who know Taekwondo and chemicals like the back of their hand. And don't forget Jane, they call her the Ripper, cause she's all about that katana. Last but not least, there's finicky Fred, who cooks up and sells some really unconventional weapons. The boss of Oasis is Big Ray, a retired assassin himself. And there's this guy named Milton who acts as a go-between to chat with clients and figure out what kind of hits the assassins should take. Oh, and Milton's cut is 15% of whatever the assassins make. Now Mike's just finished a job, and he's got his money. Milton approaches him with a new gig, take out a guy named Archie Rudd. But turns out the client wants it to look like an accident, and that's Mike's specialty. So, without skipping a beat, Mike says yes to the hit. So, the very next day, Mike's up on a rooftop, gun in hand, waiting for his target. He's figured out the perfect spot, and soon enough, he spots the guy not too far away. As the car goes by, Mike takes a shot at the tires with a special bullet thingy. It makes the driver lose control, and bam, the car crashes. Just like that, Mike's job's done, and it looks like a regular accident to everyone else. So, Mike heads back home to shake off that post-murder stress. But something strange happens. He starts thinking about his ex, Beth Carpenter, and all the good times they had. She left him, and he's moved on with his new girlfriend, Charlie Adams. But for some reason, Beth's memories come flooding back. Then, out of the blue, Mike gets a call from Milton. Milton says he needs to pick up his payment in some alley at 9 p.m. When Mike gets there, no sign of Milton. Instead, some new by assassin tries to take him down with a hail of bullets. Mike dodges the bullets, and when the guy's out of ammo and tries to bail, Mike blocks him and finishes him off. Not long after, Mike gets a message from Charlie with some heavy news, Beth has passed away. The next day, Mike heads to Beth's funeral, but he can only watch from a distance. After everyone leaves, he goes to her grave and leaves some flowers by the tombstone. That's when Charlie comes up to him and spills the beans about what happened. She tells him all about the robbery that led to Beth's death and drops a bombshell. Beth was pregnant with Mike's baby. Back home, Mike flips on the TV and sees a report about the suspect in Beth's murder. Supposedly, the guy overdosed and died. But Mike's not buying it because Beth was all into environmental stuff, fighting against companies messing up the environment. So, Mike decides to dig into this. He nabs a police report and heads to the crime scene. There, he tries to piece together what went down, using the info in the report but he spots something weird in the sedative they found in Beth's system. It was the kind they give to folks who are terrified of flying. But Mike knows for sure that Beth wasn't scared of planes at all. That's when it hits him. Beth's death wasn't some random junkie thing, it was a pro job. Mike figures it's gotta be Mick and Mac, cause they're experts at making murders look like random street crimes. So, Mike heads over to where Mick and Mac do their taekwondo practice, ready to give them a piece of his mind. 
He accuses them of being behind Beth's death, but they try to play innocent. Mike drops the bombshell about Beth being pregnant, explaining that she wouldn't have taken those heavy sedatives if it endangered the baby. Finally, Mick and Mac come clean. They admit they offed Beth, but they claim it was just business, no personal vendetta. They don't even know who wanted her gone. Even though Mike knows it's just their job, he still can't hold back and ends up brawling with his old buddies. After some pushing, they mention that Milton might know who's behind it. So, Mike rushes back to Oasis and talks to Big Ray. Ray tries to remind Mike not to let emotions clown his judgment and says Mick and Mac were just doing their gig without any hard feelings. But Mike's set on getting payback. An angry Ray even pulls a gun on him and tells him to scram. Mike leaves, but he's dead set on avenging the woman he still loves. All this mess with Big Ray makes Mike think back to when they first crossed paths. Mike was just 15, working as a newsboy and getting bullied by thugs. While hiding from the bullies one day, he spots a mysterious guy walking away from a house that explodes. Mike goes all detective, records all the shady stuff the guy, who turns out to be Big Ray, does and spies on him for weeks. Eventually, Mike shows all the evidence to Ray, and that's how they met. Now Mike had this bold idea to squeeze something out of Big Ray. He wanted Ray to teach him the assassin trade. At first, Ray's pretty close to just taking Mike out, but something about Mike's determination and smarts changes his mind. So, Ray agrees to give him the lowdown. With Ray's guidance, Mike takes on his first hit, aiming for the thug leader who used to bully him. Ray sets up this sneaky plan. Mike's supposed to stick some cash on the balcony antenna of his apartment. When the thug goes for the money, Mike gives him a push from inside his place, and the guy takes a fatal fall. Ray's got some evidence to pin it on Mike, and he warns Mike never to double-cross him. Ray's not just teaching Mike the ropes, he's also kinda like a father figure to him. He lays down three golden rules for assassins. Stay cool, don't let emotions cloud your judgment, and never get caught. Well, Mike's already broken two out of those three rules. Fast forward to today, Mike talks to Charlie and spills the beans. He thinks Beth's eco-activism might have ticked off some powerful folks, and that's why they wanted her gone. Charlie's not quite buying what Mike's saying, especially when he starts talking about Beth being taken out by pro-assassins. Before Mike can get into it with Charlie, Cliff bursts in all crazy, swinging his axe at her. Mike has no choice but to take on his most brutal partner and ends up accidentally killing Cliff with his own axe. It's a mess. Mike then presses Charlie to spill the beans on what she knows about Beth's recent stuff. She tells him about Beth's beef with Pankot Petroleum, a dirty oil company trying to drill in the North Sea. Beth's been fighting them because she's all about saving the environment. Now Mike asks Charlie to dig up info on the oil company while he goes on the hunt for Milton. And once he finds out where Milton's hiding, Mike doesn't care about Oasis' rules anymore. He gets Milton to talk by using some not-so-friendly methods. Turns out, the guy behind Beth's murder is Leonard Kent. Mike gets on the horn with Charlie and sets up a meeting pronto. Over at Oasis, Big Ray and the gang gather to talk about Mike. They think he's gone too far, especially with Cliff's death, and decide they need to rein him in somehow. So, after their meetup, Charlie spills the beans to Mike. She tells him that Beth had gathered some dirt on Pankot Petroleum, this shady Indian oil company, thanks to Archie Rudd. Mike, on the other hand, drops the bomb that Leonard Kent, a guy who works there, was behind Beth's murder. Mike's not messing around. He heads straight to Kent's office and starts laying down the heat, threatening to toss him out the window unless Kent spills all the beans about Beth's murder. Scared out of his wits, Kent spills the whole story. He hands over a recording with some other dude, ordering him to off Beth. Right then, Mick and Mac burst in, guns blazing. Kent gets caught in the crossfire and bites the dust. Mike and Mick and Mac end up in a nasty brawl. In the chaos, Mick accidentally plugs Mac, and that's the end of him. Mike manages to take out Mick with a fire extinguisher. As he tries to make his getaway, Pete jumps Mike outside the building. But Mike's too quick, and he takes Pete out using his own poison trick. Then he faces off with Fred, but he just knocks the guy out and swipes his homemade bandage. Now Mike's on his way to the big boss's place, Adel Zim, the oil tycoon who was Kent's superior. Things are heating up. When Mike reaches Zim's place, Jane the Ripper is already there, like she's been expecting him. They go at it, having a real nasty fight, 
until Mike gets the upper hand and takes Jane out using her own katana. Now, with Jane's katana in tow, Mike heads to Zim. The guy tries to make a deal, offering Mike a big pile of cash in exchange for sparing him. But Mike's not interested in the money, and he swiftly beheads Zim. So, after settling the score for Beth, Mike swings by Oasis to have a chat with Big Ray. He drops the bomb that he's taken care of the other assassins, cause they tried to off him. Mike then goes on to play the rest of that tape he got from Kent. It spills the beans on Milton, revealing how he hired some amateur hitmen to take out Mike and the crew, sending Mick, Mac, and Cliff after them. Big Ray's furious and beats up Milton, who eventually comes clean, blaming it all on greed. Mike, feeling kinda ironic, hands Milton one of Fred's poison-curing band-aids. Milton uses it, but it doesn't save him, and he dies slow. Big Ray gets real mad and threatens to shoot Mike, but deep down, he can't do it. Turns out, Ray always saw Mike like a son. Big Ray gives Mike the boot, warns him never to come back to Oasis, and Mike takes off. He's got a new mission now, to be a city vigilant and protect the place, and that's how the movie wraps up. The moral of the story is don't mix your day job as a hitman with your personal life, especially when it involves exes and eco-activism. It's a recipe for accidental axe fights and beheadings.